damages claim. Just ahead on breakfast, we're going to find out how one simple plastic box can save lives in the wake of a disaster. Now this morning, New Zealanders will learn how to drop, cover and hold, a drill that could potentially save your life during an earthquake. But what about after the damage is done? Well, this is where an iconic green box comes in. It's called Shelter Box. It provides a family with shelter, warmth and dignity in the wake of a man-made or natural disaster. And joining me now are Shelter Box response team members, Sally Ann Fletcher and Owen Smith. Thank you both so much for coming in. Owen, oh, very quickly, what is Shelter Box? It is literally a box with the essentials. Exactly. It's what we try and do with the box is what would you need if everything was destroyed? Your home's gone, all your contents and that. And that was the idea of Shelter Box, a, re a speedy replacement after a disaster. Of course, coming with that is the team itself, because you guys are highly trained, are you not? And you actually take the, the this, uh, response team takes the boxes into the various disaster areas. Exactly, Rawdon. The, the big thing with any sort of aid is making sure it actually gets to the people that need it the most. And that's our role. We're facilitators to get the goods into the country and to where we need it, but also to work with the local disaster management people or municipalities to make sure the families most in need are the recipients. Now, Sally, uh, Owen, you've been doing this for three or four years. Uh, Sally, you're more recently involved. Um, what sort of training is involved in this? Is it just a case of working out... Uh, I mean, it's not just a case of working out, taking a box in and helping a family put a tent in. No, it's not. We actually, we, we liaise very much with the local government and also Rotary plays a huge part when we go to these countries. Um, we actually go there, we ascertain there's actually a need for shelter box because we don't just give them out to anybody. You know, people spend a lot of money fundraising, a lot of time, so we actually, they're quite precious objects, but we want to give them to the people that really need them. So we go into the country, we ascertain the need, and then we um, find a way to distribute them. Usually as a team we go in and we, um, we're quite autonomous, we do a lot of the work ourselves, and we're given a lot of responsibility about who we give them to. And uh, I was reading here, 122,000 of these have been distributed in 75 countries since the initiative started. Owen, uh, you were saying to me just in the break just now that uh, recently you, you went into Samoa after the, uh, after the uh, disaster there with these. Tell me about that, how these came in useful there, how, how they uh, helped with the operation. Sure. In, in Samoa, that was one of the situations where everything was absolutely destroyed for that 40 kilometres of the, of the coastline. It looked, if you remember the old-fashioned rubbish tips we used to have here in New Zealand, that's honestly what it looked like. And the families had left, obviously scared that there would be another, another tsunami, and they're all living up in their um, plantation areas in the hills under whatever shelter they could find, mostly just covers, sometimes a bit of tin. And so Shelterbox was able to help there to give those families a base, a new home to start with. And it's amazing, you know, you take a tent, and suddenly a family's got a, a home again and a thing to work around. And then as we get a group of those together, that then becomes a community again. I was, I was stunned how quickly it became a community up there, close to their village, but safe up on the hill. And, and people were really scared to go back down to the waterfront where their homes had been destroyed. And it's not just your food and water and shelter essentials for life. You also include in there... Uh, we mentioned dignity uh, or toys for the children, little things which can actually give them a sense of purpose or a sense of life back. Um, and also, this, uh, I noticed there's a school box. Uh, so you can actually go and recreate a school in an emerge in a disaster zone. That's right. A shelter box provides that in certain um, incidents, which is fantastic because the children need to be looked after. Yeah, you know, they've all gone through so much stress and, and anxiety, and to, to get everything back to normal again and to give them that sense of um, order, which is great. The parents can then get on with their lives as well, and they know that the children are actually being looked after also. And what was your experience in Fiji? Fiji was. I was very fortunate to go there. We went there in April with the floods. Um, when we got there. A lot of people have been totally displaced and they were living in, you know, evacuation centres, schools and so on. Uh, we went to villages. We were often the first people there with Rotary to see who actually, um, you know, had actually lost homes. Uh, we, we did. A lot of people had lost all their homes and also their land had gone as well, so we were able to provide them with a shelter box. And it really does change their lives. I mean, I really need to impress it on people, actually. To give them a home, it gives them so much. It gives them dignity, most of all, and gives them hope. And it's a perfect day for us to look at that as we focus on, uh, on how we look after ourselves in emergencies. Now, Brooke uh, Dobson's going to be uh, looking into the box and actually looking at some of the uh, uh, various bits and pieces later to give us more of an idea of what's in the boxes. But Sally, Sally Ann Fletcher, Owen Smith, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Incredible initiative. Wonderful. It's great to hear about it. Like, news is next, and we're going to have a quick clip, though. It's Take a beautiful day, and one of the most beautiful spots in the country, Sumner. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, Brooke, you're in Auckland with a fully set-up shelter box. This is what we were talking about earlier. 
Yeah, as you were talking about it before, Rawdon, with Sally and Owen. So we've actually got a shelter box laid out in front of us. Sally, can you explain what we're looking at? All these items you can see here come out of the shelter box. We have a solid fuel burning stove, pots and pans, plates and cups and things that cutlery so people can eat and drink off those, obviously. We have blankets, ground sheets, mosquito nets, uh, water carrying tools and water purification pills. We also have a wonderful set of tools which obviously can change people's lives, it gives them opportunities. Hats, scarves and gloves for colder climates. And then we have a wonderful activity pack for children and this incredible tent which you can see behind us. So this tent's actually considered the Rolls Royce of disaster relief tents, I guess. Owen, can you tell me a bit about it? Sure, Brooke. So the solution that Shelterbox provides hinges around the tent really and that's designed to withstand up to 130 km hour winds, wind tunnel tested. It will stand four metres of rain, so in monsoonal or um, typhoon type conditions. And then obviously a real key is keeping the inside of the tent good for people to live in. So there's a lot of ventilation panels around the bottom that can be opened. And that means the children don't get sick living in the tents from stale air and that type of thing. So you can actually fit an extended family in one of these tents, which can be a couple of dozen usually. And now, so $1,500 is how much it costs to put this together and then fly it over to any of these disaster stricken areas. And this is where this little... Uh, surprise comes in. <laughs> We've got Jack and Charles from King's School. Uh, Charles, what have you got for us? Oh, well, I have a $7,000 check here from King's School. Uh, to get this, we had a, the Year 5s had a bake sale and we raised a lot of the money off that. And then I talked to the boys in Friday Assembly and motivate them to do jobs at home and work with some money. It can be $2 to 10 So $7,000, that's actually five uh, Shelter boxes that you've funded, pretty cool. Yeah, um, the coolest thing though is that uh, once they've been sent away, we can track where they're going, and so we know exactly who they've helped and exactly what situation they've gone into, and that's really cool. So you can actually see which family you're helping with all of this. So a fantastic, and as you've just heard, you know, it's a disaster that might not happen overseas. It can happen in your backyard at home. So fantastic stuff. It's a brilliant initiative. Thank you very much for that, Brooke. So 1500 bucks doesn't just pay for the box. That actually pays for the location of the box and the team to go with it, the whole thing. Uh, the other point I was going to make is that um, uh, these tents, uh, they, 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 these kits, they stay there. They don't get packed up and taken away afterwards. They get left in the disaster zone. In Haiti, apparently, there are still people living in those tents. What is it? However many years on from then. Anyway, fascinating um, living, uh, initiative. Living in the tents and using yeah. the tools, as they said, life-changing equipment being sent around. Fantastic initiative. Of James in Wellington on breakfast.